All right, this video is the first in a series on masking. Masking is something that lots of people struggle with. It's tricky to grasp, and sometimes just seeing it and running through a few examples helps make things helps things make more sense. So here we have our unmasked air and bone conduction thresholds in the left and in the right ear. The right ear is looking good. Everything's within normal limits. And in the left ear, we've got normal limits in the low frequencies, but it slopes down to a moderate loss in the high frequencies. The first step to masking is to determine whether or not you need to mask your air conduction thresholds. Let's look at 1000 Hz. To determine whether or not you need to mask for air conduction, the question should really be this. Is this sound in the left ear loud enough that it got picked up by bone conduction in the right ear? Remember that crossover hearing is primarily a bone conduction phenomenon. Thinking of masking this way will help you understand what's going on and why we need to mask. So the threshold in the left ear here is 20 dBHL. Our question should really be, is 20 dBL in the left ear loud enough for the right ear to hear that by bone conduction? Well, how much of that 20 dB sound makes it to the right ear? Could it be that the patient responded because they heard the sound in their right ear instead of their left? This is where interaural attenuation comes in. Interaural attenuation is how much sound this, how much the sound in one ear gets reduced when it's picked up by the other ear. By default, the simulator uses TDH50 super oral earphones with an interaural attenuation of 40 dB. So if a sound is played at 20 dBHL in the left ear, that sound gets turned down or attenuated by 40 dB when it gets picked up by the right ear. In this case, the amount of sound that cross over to the non-test ear is negative 20 dBHL, and that amount is not above the right ear's bone conduction threshold, so there's no way this response came from the right ear. It probably truly came from the left ear. So do we need to mask? Is 20 dB in HL in the left ear loud enough to hear it by bone conduction in the right ear? No, no masking is required at 1000 Hertz for air conduction. Let's take a look over at 4000 Hertz. Is the sound in the left ear loud enough that it could be heard by the right ear via bone conduction? Our level is 45 dBHL. After getting attenuated by crossing through the head, it loses 40 dB and is a 5 dBHL bone conduction signal in the right ear. Our bone conduction threshold in the right ear is 5 dBHL. So it is possible that the 45 dB sound in the test ear was heard in the right ear by bone conduction. In this case, it is possible, so we do need to mask. Last, let's take a look at 8000 Hertz. Is the sound in the left ear loud enough that it could be heard by the right ear via bone conduction? Our level is 40 dBHL, and after interaural attenuation, it loses 40 dB and is a 0 dBHL bone conduction signal in the right ear. In this case, we don't have a bone conduction threshold in the right ear at 8000 Hertz but we think that the bone conduction thresholds should be close to the air conduction thresholds. So we use that for our comparison when we don't measure bone conduction. In this case, our right con air conduction threshold is zero dBHL. So it's possible that the 40 dB sound in the test ear is heard by bone conduction in the right ear. We do need to mask at 8,000 Hertz. I hope this tutorial was helpful. In the next video, we'll go over how you determine if you need to mask for bone conduction. If you have any questions, if you would have done things differently or have a comment to share, post it down below. For more videos like this, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time. When you learn about masking, many of you probably learned a formula. The formula way of assessing this is by comparing the air conduction threshold of the test ear minus the internal attenuation is greater than or equal to the non-test ear bone conduction threshold.